Hello and uh, good evening everyone. Welcome to this uh, short session on hepatitis review. Hepatitis is one MCQ, one topic of MCQ which uh, most of the students are dreaded of, they are scared of and uh, it's one question which comes so often in the exam that uh, we just thought of having a brief uh, review of uh, hepatitis. So let me just take on, uh, I'll be just giving a brief overview on how the MCQs would look like in hepatitis and uh, covering all the five major types of hepatitis. So we have hepatitis A, B, C uh, and E and uh, let me just put it this way that this is hepatitis A, hepatitis B, HCV and HEV. If I talk about the mode of transmission, the mode of transmission of hepatitis, first MCQ, the mode of transmission of hepatitis A is fecoral and hepatitis E is predominantly fecoral. Remaining all are like B and C, they both are parenteral and having a blood route of spread. Next is if we are going to talk of, next MCQ, if we are going to talk of incubation period, the incubation period of hepatitis A is ranging from 10 days till 50 days. Hepatitis B is roughly around 30 days, that is from one month and it ranges up till six months, that is 180 days. This is an important MCQ for our MCQ exams. Like uh, it range, it has such a long uh, variable period and that is the point which is responsible for the chronicity of hepatitis B as well as hepatitis C. Hepatitis C would have slightly shorter 15 days and it again goes up till 6 months. So it can be so much variable. This is again a point for us to understand that usually the blood transmitted infections that at hepatitis B and C they will have such long variable periods. If you are going to talk about the hepatitis E, hepatitis E has roughly around two to hepatitis E has roughly around two to six weeks of incubation period. If we next, if we talk about the clinical features, question three. If you are going to talk about the clinical features, clinical features of hepatitis A, they are predominantly we are seeing in apparent infections in apparent infections and they are roughly around 80 to 90 percent of all the cases of hepatitis A are uh, in apparent and usually icteric phase that is the jaundice jaundice or the icteric phase would be in 5 to 10 percent only. In hepatitis B if you see there is an insidious onset with chronicity with the maybe the clinical features are shown in roughly 10 percent of the cases. Whereas in hepatitis C, 80% are inapparent cases and less than 20% will show clinical features. Out of these 20%, out of these 20%, another 20% of the total 20%. So out of this less than like 20% of 20% would be uh, roughly around like one fifth. Okay, so less than 4 to 5 percent will land up into cirrhosis or chronic liver diseases. And uh, in hepatitis E, it's predominantly uh, a subclinical infection. Hepatitis E is predominantly a subclinical infection. Mostly it is subclinical infection. It is usually in the young population. It is usually in the young population and more common in immunocompromised more common in immunocompromised patients immunocompromised patients which leads to a fulminant hepatitis fulminant hepatitis and hepatitis e is not so common but in immunocompromised or in pregnant females it might lead into a very fast uh, growing fulminant hepatitis if we talk about the diagnostics if we talk about the diagnostics how do we diagnose? Hepatitis A is predominantly diagnosed using uh, HAV antibodies, antibodies, or we can also diagnose using HAV from fecal uh, from stool samples. So HAV RNA from stool samples. 
hepatitis B is predominantly from uh, HBS antigen that is the Australia antigen hepatitis C is from hepatitis C virus uh, isolation and hepatitis E is detection of IgM as well as IgG antibodies antibodies and RT-PCR to detect the hepatitis E virus particles and last is uh, if we talk about the prevention modality for these hepatitis uh, infections if we talk about the preventive modality and that's where most of the MCQs would come on so in hepatitis A if you see hepatitis A is the prevention is using a vaccine we have a inactivated inactivated vaccine which is given in two doses it is given in two doses with 6 to 12 months apart hepatitis b is using hepatitis hbv vaccine hepatitis b vaccine and hepatitis b immunoglobulin for hepatitis c more important is not any vaccines mcq more important is screening for screening for hcv in high risk groups so this could be an mcq that the most important prevention modality in hcv is not about uh, vaccine because we don't have an effective vaccine for hepatitis c but it is for screening and uh, also the use of daa that is uh, direct acting antiviral uh, drugs for hepatitis c and hepatitis E, we don't have big prevention, although hepatitis E vaccine is under the trial. Hepatitis E virus vaccine is under trial and uh, still it's like a questionable phenomena. So that was just a brief overview about all the types of hepatitis. So just a quick recall that you have hepatitis A, B, C and E. Out of this A, C, A and E, sorry, A and E are fecal um, transmissions, whereas B and C they are blood transmitted and uh, for under the program national health program we are giving hepatitis b vaccines as a as a as a basic preventive modality under the six vaccine preventable diseases and uh, under uh, this you must have known uh, there is something known as mission indra dhanush mission indra dhanush this is to prevent seven vaccine preventable diseases earlier we had six so hepatitis b was one disease which was added into this six vaccine preventable diseases so six were already there plus one this one is hepatitis b earlier we had six vaccine preventable diseases six vaccine preventable diseases like we had uh, dpt diphtheria pertussis tetanus poliomyelitis tuberculosis and measles so these were your six earlier things and one added was hepatitis b so it is a new thing that was added under the program so that was just a brief overview about uh, uh, this whole scenario about this hepatitis uh, disease next is uh, i would like to share with you some of the data from uh, india that uh, hepatitis if we talk of Hepatitis, the maximum deaths, mortality due to hepatitis, mortality due to hepatitis is with hepatitis B, followed by hepatitis E, followed by hepatitis A, and lastly we have hep C as well. So uh, the point I want you to understand, there's a controversy among students, and that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the point I wanted to clarify that uh, hepatitis c has a very good treatment modality now using daas and uh, hepatitis b is one disease which has a chronicity as a feature and hepatitis b can develop into hepatocellular cancers and lead to fulminant uh, hepatitis and lead to cirrhosis so it has a very wide spectrum of disease a wide spectrum of the clinical features 
So hepatitis B has the maximum chances of mortality. If you talk about the hepatocellular cancers, that is also predominantly due to hepatitis B and C. And if you're just compelling me that you want to have a single answer that which one is more uh, commoner, uh, both are equal common. So you can just say that hepatitis B is, is slightly more in causing hep hepatocellular cancers. It has around uh, roughly around 54% of uh, attribution in causing the hepatocellular cancers. And if we talk about the cirrhosis, cirrhosis of liver that is also predominantly due to hepatitis b and uh, more than hepatitis c primarily uh, we are boasting around that hepatitis uh, c is lesser not because hepatitis c is lesser it is because we have wonderful pharmacological treatment for hepatitis c so that was just a brief uh, overview and uh, hepatitis we all know it produces same clinical features it could be a b c or e and uh, it uh, ranges from asymptomatic or inapparent infections towards the fulminant infections. So let me take up each one of them now single. So if I talk of hepatitis A, if I talk of hepatitis A, hepatitis A is a non-enveloped, it is a non-enveloped RNA virus from the Picorna viridae family. It has a, we have already discussed, fecal-oral mode of transmission and MCQ we would like to point has no carrier states. Hepatitis A has no carrier states and uh, usually hepatitis is, uh, this virus is HAV is excreted out in stools after a gap of one to two weeks. So this is of primary diagnostic importance that uh, if a person gets HIV infection, uh, the stool examination should be usually done after two weeks, not within the two weeks because that would be a kind of window period. So if I just uh, draw it on a scale that how the hepatitis would look like, uh, hepatitis uh, the serology would look like so you can have like this is the zero time where the infection actually happened and uh, usually around uh, two weeks so i'll keep it as a multiples of two two four uh, six eight and ten and twelve and maybe 14 and uh, 16 and so on so usually around two weeks usually around two weeks the hepatitis a one to two weeks the hepatitis a is uh, virus uh, virus would be seen in the fecal matter and they come down by six and a half weeks so this is what is the range for the hepatitis a rna detection this is the fecal hepatitis a virus detection and uh, if you talk about the antibodies the antibodies would be roughly forming start forming around day four if we see the antibodies in a, a different color. The antibodies would be starting in day four and they end up usually by three months or so. That's around uh, 12 weeks. So these are your early antibodies or the IgM anti HAV antibodies. So uh, point to remember is IgM would start around one month. Point to remember is HIV RNA would be found around two weeks. So these are your two MCQs for exam and uh, similarly I don't think there's a bigger question on uh, IgG antibodies they also come around the same time fourth or fifth week and they stay for a particularly longer time these are the IgG antibodies IgG HAV antibodies and they stay on for a longer time that uh, tells you about a long-term earlier infection so if we if we find uh, IgM antibody it actually tells us about acute infections and if we find IgG it tells us about old infections previous infections or uh, maybe immune uh, the patient is immune towards uh, hepatitis A so this phase actually if if you see uh, this phase that from starting from third week till seventh or eighth week this phase is what is the phase for jaundice so the patient will be having jaundice 
during this phase and this would be roughly the incubation period from uh, 10 days till 50 days and uh, that's the maximum incubation period and uh, the uh, the liver enzymes would also alt would also start increasing during this phase only from fourth week till eight tenth week it's usually alt would also increase during this time roughly around 10 times of the normal this thing so igm would stay around uh, we have seen around three to four months and igg is detectable lifetime i would also like to point up point out about the vaccine the vaccine we have already written it is an inactivated it is an inactivated vaccine it can be given after age of one year and it is given in two doses this is a two doses vaccine which is given in an interval of six to 18 months interval okay so that's all about the hepatitis a Next, if we see around is for hepatitis B. So that's a particularly longer area. If we talk about the hepatitis B virus, hepatitis B is a DNA virus. It is a DNA virus. DNA virus. And uh, from the hepedna virus family. So the name only contains DNA. The incubation period for hepatitis B, the incubation period is roughly around one month, 30 days till six months, 180 days. So I will just, uh, just for easy for me to remember is in 30 to 180 days. And usually the clinical features is it's a subtle disease, which is asymptomatic. Asymptomatic subtle disease and uh, there is predominantly loss of uh, hepatocytes ly lysis would be there in case of in case of in case of uh, clinical features in case of a patient showing the clinical features there is lysis of hepatocytes and this lysis of hepatocytes may lead to a fulminant a fulminant hepatitis and it is hepatitis which is particularly rare it is rare not so common and this is all is immune mediated this all is immune mediated so please remember that in case of hepatitis b it is point number one it is predominantly inapparent in case the patient would land up into features of uh, hepatitis those will be immune mediated lysis hepatocyte lysis and these cause uh, the chronicity and these cause the features of uh, cirrhosis of liver as well next we would take up as like most uh, we have already done that most of this would be 70 to 80 percent as subclinical hepatitis so there are four phases in the in the the hepatitis uh, uh, pathology that it is immune tolerant immune tolerant next is we are going to discuss about the pathology immune tolerant immune active immune control phase and immune escape phase so immune tolerant taste tolerant t a c e remember it this way taste t a c and e so these are four phases in immune tolerant what happens is this is hepatitis d hepatitis b virus dna it usually is there in the body and alongside the alts liver enzymes would be there and as the dna is there in the body the liver enzymes start increasing the liver enzymes start increasing and during this time the hepatitis b virus e antigen is usually positive in this phase so the alts point is alts would start increasing hepatitis d virus would be uh, hepatitis b virus dna 
would be there and found in the body the antigen is positive in active immune active now the body is showing immune active and the positive IgEs there is zero conversion hepatitis B virus E antigen would start having becoming negative so there is a zero conversion during this phase so this could be your next MCQ zero conversion would happen in immune active phase of hepatitis uh, B virus and that's the natural course and what happens to the ALT during this phase the hepatitis B V DNA would start decreasing and the ALT would increase it shows fluctuations so this would like go down and hepatitis B is also going down this that's how it decreases and uh, if I draw the ALTs in a different color, so this ALTs would start increasing and they just correspond to the peaks and to the lower turfs of this uh, curve. So basically they both are having uh, ALTs would start tend to decrease and they would be on a lower side but they first initially there is a acute uh, rise in the ALT levels. As the immune control phase pursues, in the immune control phase the hepatitis B virus DNA is on a lower side as well as the ALTs would be on a lower side and then there is an acute escape immune escape area where again there is a resurgence of the hepatitis DNA and which again may increase or decrease like this and the hepatitis uh, this ALT would again increase and then there is a concomitant decrease so these are the four phases these are the four phases for uh, this uh, pathology and that's the natural course of history during this phase immune tolerant phase during the immune tolerant phase there is minimal inflammation there is minimal inflammation in the liver and the liver histology would be not showing too much of uh, damage whereas in immune immune active phase whereas in the immune active phase mcq the liver histology would show acute hepatitis <clears throat> would show acute hepatitis again in immune control there is minimal infection minimal infection hepatitis e antigen is again negative all through the time so it is again negative all through the time and that's an important mcq please remember that zero conversion would happen in immune active phase minimal infection can be seen in the liver histology and last is uh, immune escape immune escape would again may happen as active hepatitis again so these patients would have resurgence they'll have decrease of hepatitis increase of hepatitis again features showing so these features are usually uh, again and again there and uh, that is where the whole uh, natural course would be uh, talking of and another important mcq could be in acute hepatitis phase you can see that the alt levels you will have liver enzymes fluctuate liver enzymes would be fluctuation fluctuating liver enzymes there is active inflammation we have seen there is active inflammation and this at this point there could be uh, the patient might land up into onset of onset of fibrosis fibrosis and liver cirrhosis or the patient might unfortunately land up into a HCC. So that is where this point is where there would be, could be cirrhosis or HCC, hepatocellular cancers at this point. So these junctions are important and that uh, that's how the, the people would respond. They would be immune tolerant or they would be immune active or they could be immune control or there could be immune escape phenomena depends on what uh, age usually it is seen that immune control phenomena immune control would be in very uh, elderly people 
immune control would be found in very elderly people this could also be an mcq that the age group the age group if you talk if you talk about the age group i can show you the age group maybe over here only if i talk about the age group it will be easy for you to remember if i talk about the age group immune tolerant would be seen in young individuals immune control is seen in elderly more than 60 years 60 years age so immune active and immune escape phenomena are seen in roughly around 30 to 35 year people and that's how 30 to 35 years age would be like uh, happening for this uh, so elderly people would be predominantly showing immune control phase uh, for hepatitis uh, natural course and young would again show immune tolerant phase so that was regarding the pathology and uh, for hepatitis b for hepatitis b and in minimal active there would be hepatitis e is negative please remember zero conversion happens in zero conversion happens in immune active phase <clears throat> next if we talk about is next if we talk about is uh, in hepatitis b we shall talk about the diagnosis it is by serology of HBV. In case of chronic hepatitis, chronic hepatitis B infections, the HBS antigen is, uh, is positive for roughly around 6 months. So after 6 months if the HBS antigen is still positive, it shows a chronic hepatitis B infection and uh, old hepatitis old hepatitis b infections or earlier early or remote old very long time old infections we will see anti hbs and anti hbc antibodies anti hbs and anti hbc antibodies immunity to hepatitis b would be by anti HBS. Many times students are asking about uh, the serology for hepatitis. So it's pretty easy to understand the serology. There's nothing, no rocket science in this. If you just see this uh, antibodies, so we are going to talk of, there is something known as surface antigen. Surface antigen. Then you have envelope antigen. And then you have the core antigen, okay? Surface antigen, envelope antigen, and the core antigen. So if you see this, if I just put this as uh, week number one, week number two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight, and uh, so it's a two month procedure that I'm uh, showing you. So in this, if you see this, from week one, the hepatitis surface antigen, it would start increasing. So this is from one to five. This is from one to five. This hepatitis B surface antigen, HBS antigen would increase. Next is two to four. We have a rise in hepatitis B E antigen. So please remember first to come is MCQ number one. First to come is first to come is surface antigen. Next to come is E antigen. Hepatitis C antigen is usually not detectable. So that's about the antigen. Now when the antigen comes into the body, there is a response by the body for production of antibodies. So after some time, there is production of antibodies. This HBE antigen, fourth week it comes down and subsequently, and subsequently something around five weeks or four and a half weeks. So from four and a half weeks, you will have production of anti-HBE. 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 Somewhere around two and a half weeks, there is production of anti 
एच बी सी एंटी एच बी सी एंटीबॉडी एंड समवेयर अराउंड सिक्स एंड हाफ देर इज अ प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एंटी एच बी सी एंटीबॉडी सो इट्स वेरी इजी टू रिमेंबर देर आर टू एंटीजन विच कम एंड देर आर थ्री एंटीबॉडीज so the antigen which will come is first to come first to come is hbs antigen it comes in first week it stays and it goes back in fifth week next to come is hbe antigen hbe antigen comes in second week it stays and goes on in fourth week and next is antibodies so antibodies please remember this thing has come in this manner right s e c so that's how they came and similarly s e c that's how s e c that's how they will go also the antibodies first to come is can you see the first to come is h b c the first is to come is this one is h b s the first to come is h b c hepatitis b virus c antibody anti hepatitis b it comes around 2 and a half weeks so roughly you can say around uh, 15 to 20 days this hepatitis b uh, c antibody will be coming next to come is anti hb e anti hb h b virus e antigen antibody and this comes around 4 and 1/2 weeks and last to come is last to come is h b s antibody and this is 6 and 1/2 weeks so you can remember at 2 and 1/2 4 and 1/2 6 and 1/2 for the antibodies and first and second week we will see the antigen and that's how this serology is also done for the hepatitis b antigens and antibodies so if you see this uh, how do we diagnose this or how do we uh, like uh, when to start treatment in whom to start treatment if you talk about the hbe antigen hbe antigen it is the most important for assessment for response and progression of disease and this is one which also tells us about the infectivity status of the hepatitis the treatment for hepatitis b is uh, usually lifelong and uh, basically for treatment of hepatitis we shall for treatment of hepatitis we shall see that if the patient is hb s antigen positive the treatment protocol is if the patient is hb s antigen positive and if the patient is hbs antigen positive we will check for cirrhosis of liver we will check for cirrhosis of liver the state of liver cirrhosis if the cirrhosis is <clears throat> yes or the cirrhosis could be no once the cirrhosis is there if the cirrhosis is there this patient would directly need to take up treatment but if the cirrhosis is not there then we see the age of the patient the age to be more than 30 years or less than 30 years if it is less than 30 years and there is no cirrhosis the guidelines would be to monitor the case if it is age more than 30 years if it is age more than 30 years now we need to see about the alt levels if the alt levels are grossly abnormal or if the alt levels they are normal or there is intermediate rise if there is only intermediate rise in the levels in these two cases age less than 30 and no cirrhosis age more than 30 with normal alt levels again we shall monitor but in case of alt abnormality now we will check for the viral load hbv dna load if the number of load copies if the hbv dna 
is more than 20,000. This patient we shall be sending for treatment and in case it is less than 20,000 again this patient is sent for monitoring and in case there is cirrhosis yes it directly goes for treatment only in cases of cirrhosis with uh, no uh, increase in uh, life expectancy or there is a very high yield or there are too much other comorbidities in those scenarios we shall probably uh, not uh, try to take up treatment but in all other cases as you can see that is the treatment protocol that is the management uh, protocol on in which patients are we going to treat this cirrhosis is also dependent the cirrhosis is also dependent on uh, the liver enzymes as well as on the fibrosis stage fibrosis stage of the person so there is something known as <clears throat> so if you just see about the cirrhosis stage there is something known as mcq metavir classification or metavir staging metavir staging there is f0 f1 f2 f3 and f4 f4 so if it is f0 there is no fibrosis f1 there is portal fibrosis portal fibrosis and f2 is also portal fibrosis f1 is portal fibrosis with no septa and f2 is portal fibrosis with septa and uh, f3 is uh, numerous septa numerous septa and uh, no cirrhosis no evident no evident cirrhosis whereas f4 is frank cirrhosis So primarily F2 onwards we say it is F2 onwards we say there is evidence of liver fibrosis and F4 onwards we say there is liver cirrhosis. F4 is the marker for liver cirrhosis. F2 onwards we say it is predominantly fibrosis. Also the liver staging can also be done by something known as APRI, APRI staging that is AST, AST to platelet ratio platelet ratio AST to platelet ratio it is calculated by a simple formula AST divided by the upper lim low uh, upper limit of the normal into 100 divided by the platelet count platelet count of the person so APRI staging is also important and it tells us about the fibrosis uh, staging for or we have the FIB4 there is also another classification FIB4 so you can remember that these classification FIB4 classification APRI and metavir staging is predominantly done it is predominantly done for uh, staging for fibrosis usually we talk of metavir staging where uh, F2 onwards we classify the patient as having fibrosis or F4 onwards there is cirrhosis. So that's how this uh, treatment would be there for uh, cirrhosis or for hepatitis B. Next is what are the treatment modalities or how do we uh, take up this treatment of this uh, patients. So if you talk about the treatment modalities, how do we treat in case of hepatitis B? The drugs which are used are first is TDF, tenofo vir disoproxil disoproxil fumarate tenofovir disoproxil fumarate tdf it is given at the dose of 300 milligram od dose single dose and uh, this has to be tenofovir tdf uh, there is a word of caution for tdf mcq there is a word of caution for tdf tdf should be cautious uh, while giving tdf we should be cautious with the mcq renal function test renal function test 
and in renal function test we do the serum creatinine and uh, uh, we also assess the renal functions using the CG formula CG formula that is Cockcroft uh, Gold formula Cockcroft Cockcroft Gold formula this is used to assess the renal function and it is important for TDF administration these are usually given all through the life second drug that can be used is entecavir entesavir entes entesavir and uh, entesavir uh, is there which can be given for compensated liver or uh, decompensated decompensated is where there is uh, uh, there is immense uh, very high amount of fibrosis and cirrhosis or we can have a compensatory phase of liver so entesavir could be given in both the cases of cirrhosis as well and uh, another drug is TAF that is uh, TAF is tenofovir tenofovir elafenamide elafenamide fumarate so TAF can be given but uh, usually we have uh, TDF and entesavir uh, combination which is uh, given in this case. Next uh, we can also be asked about uh, monitoring. What are the things to be monitored in these patients with hepatitis B infections? There was quite a couple of controversies regarding hepatocellular cancers. Please remember DAAs that is the directly acting antiviral uh, drugs that we have for hepatitis C has uh, considerably helped us in uh, tackling cirrhosis of liver and therefore cirrhosis of liver is much more important to be monitored in case of hepatitis B infections. So in case of hepatitis B infections we check for hepatitis B virus DNA and we shall be checking for HBE antigen because of the response of the treatment or we check for the anti HBE antibody we check for this and this has to be done as three monthly procedure first second we shall also check for hepatocellular cancers using uh, ultrasonography or we'll check for alpha fetoprotein levels and this is done usually by monthly by annually six monthly so we shall have six, six monthly screening for hepatocellular cancers Regarding prevention, we have already discussed the prevention could be using HBE, HB, hepatitis B immunoglobulin. This is given at the dose of 0.5 ml, that is 100 international units. It is given as IM within 24 hours, within 24 hours of accidental exposure. We can also give the hepatitis B vaccine, which is given under the universal immunization program as well. Hepatitis B vaccine, which is given at birth at 6 weeks, 10 weeks and 14 weeks. So it can be given as a part of the pentavalent vaccine on that birth as a, as a monovalent hepatitis B vaccine. And uh, please remember, I would uh, like to point out there could be an MCQ over here that hepatocellular cancer is more common in which all patients there is a higher risk there is a, i'll write it probably at this point only there is a higher risk there is a higher risk of hepatocellular cancer in patients who are with family history of hccs who have very high amount of fibrosis and cirrhosis that is meta stage 4 onwards cirrhosis and there is age more than 40 so in these people there is a, a higher chance of uh, higher chance of uh, developing hepatocellular cancers and of course if the viral load is much more again they are at uh, higher risk of developing hepatocellular cancers so that's about the uh, hepatocellular cancers and uh, after we are certain for fibrosis we should we can also check using uh, child book scoring or uh, what are the complications this could be a mcq what are the complications of hepatitis uh, b the complications of hepatitis b could be uh, there could be ascites 
or there could be other hepatic complications hepatic complications or they could be mcq extra hepatic what are the extra hepatic complications of hepatitis b the extra hepatic complications could be intense uh, arthralgia arthralgia skin rashes intense arthralgia skin rash blow grade fever which is carrying on major extra hepatic major extra hepatic side effect is we can have polyarteritis nodosa or we can have some glomerular pathology we can have some renal involvement as well we can have some renal involvement as well renal involvement as well and uh, renal involvement having glomerular pathology right and uh, usually it is seen that all the cases of uh, complications of hepatitis uh, b virus all the most of the cases of complicated hepatitis b virus infections they land up into uh, they must have had 50 percent all the cases this is also statistics that all the cases of complicated hepatitis must have had 50 percent must have had the acute infection so in case a patient lands up into a fulminant hepatitis due to hepatitis b these patients are uh, they, they are more prone to develop extra hepatic complications that's what uh, the statistics would say so that was about the hepatitis b and uh, next we shall take up hepatitis c that is a chronic hepatitis hepatitis c virus and which is not so uh, like uh, uh, not so bad as hepatitis B because uh, hepatitis C is controllable by use of uh, direct acting antiviral uh, drugs. So hepatitis C we have uh, non A that that was earlier known as non A and non B hepatitis. It is a single stranded enveloped single stranded enveloped RNA first MCQ second the mode of transmission we have already done it is using the mode of transmission we have already done it is using uh, blood root infected syringes blood transfusions blood transfusion infected syringes it is more common in people who are immunocompromised in uh, hiv plhivs people living with hivs and in msm male having sex with male so these people are more prone to develop uh, hcv infections we would also like to point out that uh, the chronicity um, more than more than 20 percent of uh, all cases of all cases of HCV are land up into chronic HCV infections and uh, it's uh, out of them will have very higher amount of cirrhosis as well so in all the cases third uh, if I just talk about the natural progression uh, of uh, HCV in all the cases of HCV infected roughly around 15 to uh, 50 percent they show spontaneous regression of the disease and in roughly around remaining 85 to 50 percent right remaining people they will harbor the infection harbor infection for all their life and this harboring of infection all their life and they become a chronic stage chronic carrier stage so that's how this hcv is bad because it causes too much amount of chronicity in hcv so if you talk about the serology of hcv if you talk about the diagnosis of hcv if you look at this hcv serology the first to develop HCV is pretty easy in the sense that first to develop in HCV serology if you look at this like uh, these are the months that we have zero month and that's the zero month then you have in between 15 days then you have one month and uh, two months and uh, three months and uh, 
four months and uh, five months and maybe a sixth month as well so if you see these months the first immediately usually within few days the hcv within like five to seven days the hepatitis c rna tends to increase and it keeps on in the body for a very long time this is the hcv rna titer so the hcv rna tends to increase in a very early stage then you have in a very short period around 15 to 20 days till around two weeks we have hcv antigen that is a p22 core antigen this is a p22 core antigen that is a hcv antigen and just after this antigen around two and a half weeks now we shall have the antibody which stays in the body for very long time this is the anti hcv anti hcv antibody and this is the one which is most commonly used uh, test we uh, the predominant used test is anti hcv antibody which starts to rise after mcq which starts to rise after every after like uh, two and a half weeks of infection so this the most commonly used serological test is detection of most common use serological test is detection of anti hcv antibody which happens to rise after after around 15 to 20 days of infection the serological test as we have already discussed right in the start of the session that for hepatitis c uh, more important is not about prevention it's not about um, uh, using vaccines it's about screening so this anti hcv screening antibody anti hcv antibody screening should be done in cases of intravenous drug abusers male to male commercial sex workers in case of uh, children having a lot of blood transfusions as in thalassemias or people living with hiv pl hivs or uh, even in prisons where there are close inmates so in these cases, uh, the most predominant is use of anti-HCV antibody. So anti-HCV antibody, please remember it starts uh, very early and that's how uh, this is the most commonly used test for uh, this uh, hepatitis C. Next we have is, after diagnosing, next we have is how to treat hepatitis C. The treatment of hepatitis C, if you see, hepatitis C for uh, treatment if you look at the treatment uh, hepatitis C is treated using DAs I've been talking all since the start of the lecture that we use directly uh, directly acting antiviral drugs and uh, this hepatitis C in case this patient is hepatitis C virus RNA positive we find for associated cirrhosis back again that is, if you remember, if there is metavir stage, metavir stage F4 onwards, or if the patient is having uh, APRI stages, that is APRI, APRI stages, AST to the platelet ratios, and based on cirrhosis, this patient, we will say that there is no evidence cirrhosis or there is yes cirrhosis. If there is yes cirrhosis, we shall check for the child book score. Child book score for assessment of liver cirrhosis. Child book score for assessment of liver cirrhosis would be having classified into child book score A. A is please remember if it is a compensated. I assume that we all remember that the, about the child book scoring. So if not, I would recommend you to please uh, hang on and uh, have a, we have another session on uh, liver cirrhosis uh, uh, assessment. So you can uh, see to that session or uh, you can just read it about the child puck scoring. Child puck score A uh, is about the compensated. It's just about the compensated liver uh, pathology or we can have CP score B or CP score C, which tells us about the decompensated decompensated liver pathology so if the liver status is decompensated or if it is compensated so now basically i have three situations 
that either the patient would have no cirrhosis or CPA or CP child pack score A or child pack B and C. If it is child pack A, we shall give to the patient MCQ so, uh, sofosbuvir sofosbuvir plus daclatasvir daclatasvir. In case it is child pack score A, the drug of choice is sofosbuvir. plus Velpa Tasvir, Velpa Tasvir. If it is a decompensated, it is a ribavirin containing uh, regime that is Sofosbuvir plus Velpa Tasvir plus we give ribavirin. These all cases, these all drugs are given for 12 weeks, 12 weeks and 12 weeks. So after 12 weeks of trial, after 12 weeks of trial, after 12 weeks of trial, now we will check for the HCV RNA. We will check about the viral load back again. Once we check for the HCV RNA, after 12 weeks, this HCV RNA could be positive or it could be negative. If it is negative, that means treatment is completed. But if the HCV RNA is still positive, if the HCV RNA is still positive, we need to refer to the hepatology center, higher hepatology center from any primary unit or secondary unit where the patient is being treated upon. So please remember there are certain uh, side effects which again make the patient to be referred to a higher center. So that's the protocol that we follow for hepatitis C virus infections. And uh, if you just look at, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just decrease this font. If you can just see this whole totality that basically we are seeing this as cirrhosis patient might land up into cirrhosis after HCV infection. Cirrhosis could be positive or negative. If it is a positive, we check for compensated or decompensated phase. We check for compensated or decompensated. If there is no cirrhosis, answer is pretty simple. You give uh, sofosbuvir and uh, daclatasvi. So that's a, that's a standard regime that we, that's a standard regime that we give for 12 weeks for hepatitis C infections. And please remember in case of uh, uh, for ribavirin, I would also like to point out this could be an MCQ from pharmacology. Ribavirin is more prone to develop anemia. Anemia is of particular importance in case of ribavirin therapy. And in case the HB falls below 10, again, we need to refer this patient for a higher center for assessment of his uh, status about uh, this thing. Right. So... With that, we are almost uh, hepatitis E infections are not so like uh, it's more uh, fulminant in uh, hepatitis E. We have already covered hepatitis E is more fulminant in uh, pregnancy and overall it's a self-limiting type of disease. So with that, uh, I would like to close off this session and uh, any further MCQs you have, you're most more than welcome to ask online or you can comment in the uh, comment box below and uh, we shall be happy to answer any of your questions and uh, if you like this uh, session please share it with your friends and uh, for any mcqs or any doubts you have you're most welcome there is a facebook group known as m-u-k-h m-o-h-i-t community and medicine discussions so this is a facebook forum that we have for discussions of uh, questions on uh, preventive medicine and medicine as well and uh, if you want the updates you are more than uh, welcome to join up our uh, groups on uh, whatsapp and on telegram you can just send a hello to this number with your name 86990 14009 that's a helpline for the whatsapp or the telegram 
and that's for the mcqs any doubts you have anything you want to discuss you are more than welcome so please remember just a quick recap that we have hepatitis a b c and e a and e are fecal oral and mostly all the diseases are uh, self-limiting diseases you have directly acting antiviral drugs for hepatitis c that's a very good in uh, treatment we have and that's the reason the hepatocellular cancers or the cirrhosis we don't see so much in hepatitis c though there is more chronicity in hepatitis c infections hepatitis b virus infections are kindly uh, slightly more uh, more aggressive in the sense because uh, there there is a need to manage them using uh, tdfs or tafs uh, drugs and uh, which are not so not so user friendly and that's how the DEAs has actually changed the way that uh, the way we deal with hepatitis in uh, primary centers or in secondary centers so with that i would like to close off and in case uh, you have doubts you have the contacts for us and uh, thank you so much for watching this video